Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. What an amazing turnout we have. I want to start by saying good afternoon to all of you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Renata Steele, and I'm the news director at WENY News in Horseheads, New York. I also have the distinct honor of being involved with the Tioga County Moving Wall Project. We're here today to lift up, support, and remember the Vietnam veterans in our community, especially those who are no longer with us. This is all for you. So please, let us give a thank you for your service and the welcome home you deserve. Thank you so much. We also have to acknowledge the tremendous amount of community support that helped bring the moving wall here this week. Thousands and thousands of hours of donated time, money, labor, and literal blood, sweat, and tears have gone into helping make this project possible. The Moving Wall is here as a traveling tribute to the more than 58,318 men and women whose, whose names it bears. 58,318 men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice in service to this country. For many of you with us today, these are your fathers, your brothers, sisters, cousins, friends, and neighbors. Too many of our Vietnam veterans may never get the chance to see the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in person in Washington, D.C. Here, they can visit the wall in their own community, surrounded by love and support. While the wall may also bring up painful memories, we hope it can bring a sense of healing as well. I'd like to share with you some facts about the wall that you may not know. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C. was dedicated on Veterans Day of 1982. Of the more than 58,000 names on the wall, eight of them are women. Next to each name is a symbol. A diamond signifies the confirmed death of a service member. A plus sign signifies those who were considered missing in action when the war ended. When the remains of a service member are returned or accounted for, that plus sign is converted into a diamond. The youngest person on the wall is Marine Private First Class Dan Bullock at just 15 years old. The oldest person on the wall is Army Sergeant First Class Dwayne McGriff at age 63. As our program begins, we first have to thank Williamson High School for being a true partner in this project. Your support of our veteran community does not go unnoticed. And the site outside, will, if you've seen with the flags and the stones, will be a permanent memorial to our veterans for years to come. We'd like to begin this afternoon by introducing the Tioga County Honor Guard, who will post the colors and do a salute outside. We additionally would like to welcome the color guard of the special guerrilla unit who are joining us from across New York and Connecticut. Followed by the salute, we will hear taps performed on the bugle by Seth Gorsline with the Mansfield University Brass Band. Again, that salute will take place outside, so I'm hoping we will be able to hear it. Please post the colors.
please well, wait while we welcome the color guard with the special gorilla unit. All right, well, while we wait, why don't we have Mr. Gorslein perform taps for us today? Yes. At this time, if you'd please remain standing, we're going to, <laughs> we're going to uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance, and helping us today is the Mount Laurel Service Unit, Tioga County Girl Scouts and Boy Scout Troop 2062 from Tioga. If you would please come to the stage. Will you please join me in, in the Pledge of Allegiance? A Pledge of Allegiance? And again, if you would remain standing for just a little bit longer, we have Rachel Rose with us to perform the Star Spangled Banner. What 
so proudly veiled at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the We'd also like to recognize the Tioga County Commissioners today for this support of this project. It has been amazing having you uh, back this. So Commissioners Sam Van Loon, Mark Rice, and Shane Nickerson, thank you for your support and for being here today. Next, I would like to welcome retired U.S. Navy Chaplain Tom Hager to deliver the invocation today. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal Father, grant your blessing upon these next days as we remember the men and women who are memorialized upon these walls. We have been great because you've made us great, God, and we will remain great only unless we remain in you and your instruction. Lord, every generation is required to make its own sacrifices. And to date, there's never been a war to end all wars, but there will be your final war. And until then, each nation is involved in a struggle. Our Vietnam War veterans, Lord, were involved in that struggle a generation ago. They gave their lives, their blood, their sacrifice, things, God, that we don't really appreciate unless we've been there with them. But they gave it willingly. And we, Lord, just want to mention their families, their friends, their children, God, that have had to be bereaved in their missing, in their, in their absence. Accept our prayers as we thank these men and women and their family. Look upon mercy upon those among us who are still, to this day, dealing with their loss. But also, God, please let us renew our commitment to you and the command you have laid at our nation's feet and the generations to follow, to be that nation who loves you in your justice and liberty. Let all those here who close their prayers according to their traditions do so. I close my prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. And may we pause for a moment of silence for the fallen. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to welcome up to the stage Paula Jones with the Tioga County Moving Wall Committee. First of all, I'd just like to say thank you and welcome. Um, I owe this to Jessica. She stopped into my hardware show, store about a year ago and wanted help with t-shirts. I'm here with t-shirts. But with that, it's been a great honor. 
um, to see this community come together for what a wonderful celebration of the 58,000 on the wall. To those of you that are lucky enough to come home, we thank you. We also would like to thank our community for coming together and making this happen. We did a lot of fundraisers. We did a lot of asking. I've got a large mouth. I asked a lot of people and everybody came through for me. Thank you. If you get the opportunity to look at these beautiful podiums that were made by two seniors graduated, the lumber came off from my father-in-law's property. He is a veteran and also was a principal here for years. It's very dear to my heart to be able to have that. Also the fallen soldier out there. That cherry came off from his property. Larry Jones is smiling down and he's thanking all of you vets because he was always proud. I was told not to mention somebody's name so I won't. But my other half, my better half, had a lot to do how beautiful that looks out there. And Billy Colgrove, thank you very much. Those two spent eight weeks every day here getting this ready. They had help. People came in and helped every time. I appreciate you men so very much. But again, thank you to all you veterans and thank you to the community. God bless. And now to the stage, we would like to welcome Vietnam veteran Ken Leone, who served with the U.S. Army. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone including Paula and Rob and Jessica for bringing this wall here to remember the Vietnam veterans. It really, really is, hits my heart that everybody is involved in this here from all the volunteers, that motorcade that came through town, all those motorcycles, the policemen, etc. cetera. I, I, from all Vietnam veterans, we thank you. The Vietnam Veteran Wall is obviously silent, but to me and other veterans, it screams mem memories. Some memories are good, as in the fellow veterans who, are, who were in my company from across the country, foreign countries I would have never visited, and the different cultures of those countries. Some memories, however, are very sad. I personally know over a dozen names who are listed on the wall, some who died right in front of me. So many thousands of miles from home. So my co connection to the wall is very emotional. To the families and friends who have names on the wall, they also have a strong emotional connection to the wall. Following are a combination of my thoughts and also words said at other ceremonies that convey my feelings about the 58,000 plus names on the wall. We will never forget them, never forget their devotion their sacrifice, loyalty, and valor of those whose names are on the wall. The men of the Vietnam War answered the call of their country. Some died in the arms of us here today. They died uncomplaining. However, they knew the sorrow, the news of their death would cause their families and friends. They sacrifice their lives in the name of duty, honor, and country. In vowing to never forget their sacrifice, we honor those who gave their lives for our country. So I would like to read to you a letter that was left at the wall in Washington, D.C. by a mother 
whose son's name is on the wall. The words are written by the mother, but she writes it as if her son is speaking as he looks through the wall, as people like you are walking past the wall searching from names. Thank you from the wall, Vietnam Memorial, Washington, D.C. And remember, these are the words of the uh, veteran who has been killed and he's looking through the wall. At first, there was no place for us to go until someone put up that black granite wall. Now every day and night, my brothers and sisters want to see the many people from places afar file in front of this wall. Many stopping briefly and many for hours and some that come on a regular basis. It was hard at first, not that, I, it's getting, that, not that it's gotten any easier, but it seems that many of the attitudes toward the war that we were involved in have changed. I can only pray that the ones on the other side have learned something and more walls as this one needn't be built. Several members of my unit and many that I did not recognize have called me to the wall by touching my name that is engraved on it. The tears aren't necessary but are hard even for me to hold back. Don't feel guilty for not being with me, my brothers. This was my destiny as it is yours, to be on that side of the wall. Touch the wall, my brothers, so that you can share the memories that we had. I've learned to put bad memories aside and remember only the pleasant times that we had together. Tell our other brothers out there to come and visit me, not to say goodbye, but to say hello and be together again, even for a short time, and to ease that pain of loss that we all share. Today, an irresistible and loving call comes to the wall. As I approach, I can see an elderly lady. And as I get closer, I recognize her. It's Mama. As much as I have looked forward to this day, I have always regretted it because I don't know how, what reaction I would have. Next to her, I suddenly see my wife and immediately think how hard it must be for her to come to this place and my mind floods with pleasant memories of the past 40 years. There's a young man in a military uniform standing with his arm around her. My God, it has to be my son. Look at him, trying to be a man without a tear in his eye. I yearn to tell him how proud I am seeing him standing tall, straight, and proud in his uniform. Mama comes closer and touches the wall and I feel the soft and gentle touch I had not felt in many years. Dad has crossed to the other side of the wall and through our touch, I tried to convey to her that dad is doing fine and is no longer suffering or feeling pain. I see my wife's courage building as she sees mama touch the wall and she approaches and lays her hand on my waiting hand. All the emotions, feelings, and memories of four de decades past flash between our touch, and I tell her that it's all right. Carrying on with our life, and don't worry about me. I can see as I look into her eyes that she hears and understands me, and a big burden has been lifted from her. I watch as they lay flowers and other memories of my past. My lucky charm that was taken from me and sent to her by my company commander. A tattered and worn teddy bear that I can barely remember having as I grew up as a child and several medals that I had earned were, pre were presented to my wife. One of them is the combat infantry badge that I am very proud of and I noticed that my son is also wearing this medal. I had heard 
I had earned mine in the jungles of Vietnam, and he probably earned his in the deserts of Iraq. I can tell you that they are preparing to leave. And I try to take a mental picture of them together because I don't know when I will see them again. I wouldn't blame them if they did not return and can only thank them that I was not forgotten. My wife and mama near the wall for one final touch and so many years of indecision, fear and sorrow are let go. As they turn to leave, I feel my tears that had not flowed for so many years form as if dew drops on the other side of the wall. They slowly move away with only a glance over their shoulder. My son suddenly stops and slowly returns. He stands straight and proud in front of me and snaps a salute. Something makes him move to the wall and he puts his hand upon the wall and touches my tears that had formed on the face of the wall. And I can tell that he senses my presence there and the pride and the love that I have for him. He falls to his knees and the tears flow from his eyes and I try my best to reassure assure him that it's all right and the tears do not make him any less of a man. As he moves back, wiping the tears from his eyes, he sl so silently mouths, God bless you, Dad. God bless you, son. We will meet someday, but in the meanwhile, go on your way. There is no hurry. There is no hurry at all. As I see them walk off in the distance, I yell out to them and everyone there today as loud as I can. Thanks for remembering. And as others on this side of the wall join in, I notice that the U.S. flag that so proudly flies in the front of us every day is flapping and standing proudly straight out in the wind. Thank you all for remembering. So, I also want to thank all of you here today and who will come over the next five days to honor all the Vietnam veterans whose names are on the wall. I want you all to remember this saying. It appears on the Wo Wounded Warrior Project Medal. The greatest casualty is being forgotten. And in the next five days, these Vietnam veterans will not be forgotten. Thanks to you. Thank you. We would now like to welcome Vietnam veteran Captain Guy D. Gruters, U.S. Air Force and POW. Thank you. I'd like to repeat everything that Ken said about doing such a nice job to put this thing on. I was in the Air Force, I was a fighter pilot, and was a forward air controller with the Army, flying O-1s, which was also the L-19s, and I was, had 400 combat missions, badly shot up a number of times, I was shot down twice. After 10 months, I was captured. I was a POW for five years, three months in North Vietnam, in six different camps. So I was over there for six years, but luckily I had an angel, my wife Sandy, who was waiting for, who were waiting for me. She waited for me. And then when I came back, we had many children and grandchildren. I wrote a book and I, I have it here and I'll be happy to endorse it personally to anybody that wants me to. But the real reason I'm calling is because of a new book that I just finished a draft on. And it's for Vietnam vets and it's for Vietnam and it's for the country. 
And what it shows is, is that God used Vietnam to win the war against the USSR. I'm talking the Cold War that lasted from 46 to Christmas Day of 1991. 10,000 nuclear bombs on each side deliverable would have wiped out the entire North Hemisphere and maybe the entire Earth. But it didn't happen. On Christmas Day 1991, President Gorbachev called President Bush and said, we quit. The Cold War is over. We're lowering our hammer and sickle flag for the last time today, Christmas Day the 25th, showing you who's in charge of this game. God beat him, beat the entire Soviet Union, 15 nations within it, 15 states within it, on Christmas Day, December 25th, lowered their flag the last time. Like our flag, their flag lowered. The next day, Bush, Gar Gorbachev said it'll be 15 independent nations. There will be no more USSR. The war's over. We quit. It was because of the insane militarization started by the Gulf of Tonkin incident in Vietnam by the Navy in 1964. We couldn't get the hands, we couldn't get the economy of the USSR out of the military hands because of the length of the Vietnam War. And they bankrupted our nation completely. Our economy is nothing. Our people have no food. They have no housing. They have no nothing. It's all because of the insane militarization. This was started by Vietnam. Who says so? I have 15 reference books. They're all in Russian, all translated to English. All their top leadership says, Vietnam bankrupted the USSR. And basically what we have, what we have is a victory so complete. It's as if the United States president called the USSR president on Christmas Day and said that we were lowering this flag that day and the next day it would be 50 states but they would be independent nations like the independent nation of Pennsylvania, of New York, New Jersey, North Carolina and so on. That's the measure of that victory. It was done by Vietnam. Somebody completely attesting to that was a president of Singapore who wrote a book called From Third World to First because he took Singapore from or from fifth, uh, fifth World to Third uh, from Third World to First because he took a third world nation Singapore to First World in 30 years 1990 to 19, 1960 to 1990 and he said all of Southeast Asia 450 million people are free today from communist insurgency because of the U.S. commitment in Vietnam. He said they strengthened the guts we all had to resist the communist insurgencies. And because of the U.S., 450 million people in Southeast Asia are free today. All of Southeast Asia. These are his words, the president of Singapore, who was there the whole time. He said the entire Southeast Asia people owe a blood debt to America. I pass that on. They owe a blood debt to all the Vietnam vets and all the families and all the people that died and all their families, which is a real terrible tragedy people don't understand. It's not just the vets, it's their families. But at any rate, congratulations. You were the reason, honestly, why the Cold War was won without one nuclear weapon being fired and that was according to the Russians, not us, that's the Russians saying that. Thank you very much. I'm not as tall as him. Now we would like to move to the portion of our ceremony where we'll be laying a wreath and reading the names from our local counties of the individuals who are on the wall. The laying of the wreaths represent the Vietnam service members killed in action, those declared missing in action, and prisoners of war. We will be placing wreaths for the lives lost in Vietnam from Tioga, Bradford, and Potter counties. We will begin with our host county, Tioga County. Reading the names today, is Sue Sterling, the sister of Michael Barnes, who was killed in action February 4th, 1969.
Placing the wreath today is Thomas Masso, the brother of Robert Masso, who was also killed in action March 26, 1968. Please come up to the stage. My, oops, sorry. My brother, Michael Allen Barnes, William Boyle, Carl Lee Carson, David Louver Cleveland, Richard Eugene Fay, Asa Thomas Johnson, Abraham Lincoln Moore, Robert Bruce Masso, James Dwayne Plank, William Leon Ripley, J. D. Rumsey, George Smith, Malin. Hugh Watkins, Frederick Devilla Westcott. Thank you. <clears throat> Joining us now is Potter County. Reading the names today is Lieutenant Colonel Ken Wingo, Vietnam veteran who served in country 1970 and 1971, and placing the wreath is Renee Kidlighter, the Deputy Director for Veterans Affairs for Potter County. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, fellow veterans. There are nine Vietnam veterans who were killed uh, in action from Potter County. I will read the names and some information. Gareth Lowell Kibbe from Ulysses, U.S. Army, died in action June 24, 1967, Benoit Province. He rests in Fort Riley Cemetery, Fort Riley, Kansas. Clark R. Douglas from Galeton, U.S. Army, died November 11, 1969. Phuc Long Province, and he rests in West Hill Cemetery, Galeton. Kenneth Lampman, Ulysses. U.S. Army, died March 8, 1967, in Binh Dinh Province. He rests in Ulysses Cemetery. Bruce Calvin Maynard, U.S. Army, June 6, 1969, Tainin Province. He rests in Sweden Hill Cemetery, Sweden Township. Edgar Edwin Nursky, U.S. Air Force, died January 21, 1967, Anzok Province. He rests in Glen Oaks Memorial Cemetery, Cicero, California. Edward Ristick, a U.S. Army, March 11, 1968, Hanin Province, he rests in St. Augustine, St. Paul Cemetery, Costello, Pennsylvania. Donald Laven Stiles, U.S. Army, April 2, 1968, 
Bindong province. He rests in Holy Sepulchre Cemetery, uh, Totowan, New Jersey. Gerald Dwayne Stonemetz, U.S. Army, January 8, 1969. Contum Province, he rests in Maple Grove Cemetery, Shingle House, Pennsylvania. Edwin Franklin Thompson, Tubbs, U.S. Army, January 12, 1968. Bin Tong Province, Woodlong National Cemetery, Elmira, New York. Thank you. And representing Bradford County this afternoon, reading the names will be Jim Van Blarkham, the brother of Richard Van Blarkham, who was killed in action May 12, 1968. And placing the wreath will be their brother, Robert Van Blarkham, also brother of Richard Van Blarkham. Please come to the stage. First off, I'd like to thank all the sponsors and the organizers and all the hard work that they did to put this on. And I'm privileged and honored to be asked to read the names of the 19 servicemen who lost their lives in Vietnam. William Eugene Allen, Alden McKay Jr. Asherman, Floyd Joseph Berry, Gary Lee Heeman, Donald Mahali Horton, Merle Griffin Hubbard, Brian Stewart Krill, Leon Laverne Langinger, Michael Thomas Mahoney, Richard Lee Junior Maynard, Robert Junior McWilliams, Norman James Nobles, Robert Norman Norris, George B. the Third Pearson, Robert Lloyd Platt, Leo Earl Seymour and Glenn Eugene Spencer, John Garth Towner, and my brother Richard William Van Blarkham. Thank you. I would now like to welcome Tim Swan, U.S. Air Force veteran, to perform Amazing Grace on the bagpipe. Thank you. 
at this time, please welcome veteran and Williamson High School principal, William Butterfield. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Butterfield, and I have the honor of being a veteran and the privilege of being the principal here at Williamson High School. A little over a year ago, the decision to bring this monument to our small town was made, and through hard work, volunteers, and the generosity of members of our community, the immense task of organizing, preparing, and hosting the moving wall was achieved. I just want to take a minute to thank everyone who played a part up to this point in the process, those who have volunteered to read names and assist in other tasks throughout the week, community members, churches, and organizations for your generosity donating money, food, time, resources to put on this event. I'd especially like to thank Paul, uh, Paula and Robert Jones, Bill, Colgro Bill Colgrove, John Cooper, Jessica Barron, Dale Martin, Dan Cook, and Marwin Cummings for contributing so much time and effort to preparing the site for this event. This is a wall that moves literally across the country from town to town, bringing with it the names of 58,000 men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice during the Vietnam War. This moving wall is a poignant reminder of the cost of freedom and the human toll of conflict. For those who have visited this wall before, or the monument in Washington, D.C., they will tell you often of overwhelming emotion that washes over them as they trace the names etched in the black granite. Each name represents a life cut short, a dream left unfulfilled, a family forever changed. These are not just names on a wall. They are stories of bravery, camaraderie, and resilience. The Vietnam War was a divisive time in our history, and sadly, many who served came home to jeers, insults, and ungrateful communities who chose to treat veterans with contempt. Many never received so much as a welcome home. This black mark on our nation's history will never fully go away, but the moving wall can serve as a unifying force, a place where veterans, families, and communities come together to remember, to honor, and to heal. It stands as a testament to the principle that we must never forget the sacrifices made by those who answered the call of the duty. As we reflect on the significance of the moving wall, we must also recognize the healing power it brings. To many veterans, visiting the wall is a profound and cathartic experience, an opportunity to confront the past, to find solace in the company of comrades, and to receive the gratitude of a grateful nation. The moving wall reminds us of our duty to honor and support our veterans, not just with words, but with actions. It challenges us to ensure that every veteran receives the respect, care, and opportunities they deserve after their service. As we gather here today, let us recommit ourselves to the values that the moving wall represents. Unity, remembrance, and gratitude. Let us pledge to never forget the sacrifices of those who served in Vietnam and to uphold the promise that their legacy will endure for generations to come. In closing, I encourage each of you to walk this path along the moving wall, perhaps during better weather. Stand before its somber presence read the names aloud, and reflect on the profound impact of their service. Let us carry forward the lessons of the moving wall to honor our veterans and to cherish our freedom. To the veterans who served in Vietnam, thank you and welcome home. We have another musical performance for you this afternoon. Please welcome the Wellsboro Men's Chorus who will be performing God Bless America.
Before we say farewell, let's please welcome back to the podium retired U.S. Navy Chaplain Tom Hager. Let us pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. And this concludes our opening ceremony. We want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being here today, visiting the Moving Wall, and honoring our Vietnam veterans. Again, to the vets in our, in our audience today, thank you for your service, and welcome home.